Hello, this is Bill Bullard with RCAF USA, the voice of the independent cattle producer in the United States of America. Well, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has proposed a rule to implement the provision in the Packers and Stockyards Act that prohibits packers from giving any undue or unreasonable preference or advantage to any person or subjecting any person to any undue or unreasonable prejudice or disadvantage. To better understand why this provision is included in the near-century-old Packers and Stockyards Act, let's take a brief trip through history. In the late 1800s, U.S. businesses were booming, but not without problems. In 1890, Congress passed the Sherman Antitrust Act to protect markets from monopolistic conduct. It was well understood that monopolistic conduct could undermine the tenets of a capitalistic free market system, so rules were established early on to protect the America's infant marketplace. Then, just 24 years later, it was evident that the Sherman Act was insufficient to protect robust market competition, and the second major antitrust law was passed, the Clayton Act of 1914, which prohibited conduct that reduced competition. So having enacted two separate antitrust laws within 24 years, you would think Congress would leave it to the regulators to ensure that the new rules protected competition for both buyers and sellers. But that wasn't the case. Just seven years later, after the enactment of the Clayton Act, it was realized that one segment of our economy was not adequately protected by the first two sets of rules. That segment was the U.S. livestock market, which Congress realized was unique. Indeed, it was unique because it consisted of many, many livestock sellers, but only a handful of meat packers that were in control of the livestock sector's competitive marketing channels. To address the uniqueness of the U.S. livestock markets, Congress passed the Packers and Stockyards Act of 1921. The Packers and Stockyards Act established rules specific to livestock markets that prohibited the formation of monopolies, the apportionment of territories, and the controlling of prices. So like the Sherman and Clayton Acts, the Packers and Stockyards Act sought to protect the competitiveness of the livestock marketplace. But the Packers and Stockyards Act went beyond the scope of the Sherman and Clayton Acts by also prohibiting certain unfair practices in livestock markets that could cause harm to individual livestock sellers, but may not cause harm to competition as a whole. For example, the Packers and Stockyards Act prohibits unfair, unjustly discriminatory or deceptive practices in livestock markets and prohibits the granting of undue or unreasonable preferences or advantage, which is the subject of the USDA's proposed rule. Now, as recently as 2010, the USDA made clear for more than 70 years, it was recognized that purposes of the Packers and Stockyards Act are not limited to protecting competition. Consequently, the USDA held the position that these prohibitions against unfair competition could be enforced in some instances, even without the producer having to show that in addition to the harm they experienced, there was also a harm to the entire competitiveness of the industry. In other words, it was realized that if individual producers were subjected to these kinds of unfair practices, they could be put out of business one producer at a time without having an immediate impact on industry competition as a whole. But for nearly 100 years, the USDA never got around to writing rules to implement those important protections for individual producers. And without the USDA's expertise to guide them, several courts have ruled that a violation of the Packers and Stockyards Act cannot be proven unless the injured party can show that the entire competitiveness of the industry was also harmed. Now, the USDA recently stated that these court decisions are inconsistent with the plain language of the statute and that they incorrectly assume that harm to competition was the only evil Congress sought to prevent by enacting the Packers and Stockyards Act. Today, however, in its proposed rule, the USDA appears disinterested in asserting its expertise in this important issue. Instead, the USDA makes clear that its proposed rule was written so as not to conflict with those prior court decisions, and that it expects those decisions related to the showing of competitive harm to likely remain unchanged. Now, our concern is this. Unless the USDA reasserts its position that the purposes of the Packers and Stockyards Act are broader than protecting only the competitiveness of the entire marketplace by also protecting the competitiveness of individual producers within that market, some producers will be left without a market and our industry will continue to contract. To learn more about how RCAF USA is fighting to preserve a competitive marketplace for independent U.S. cattle producers, Go to www.r-calfusa.com and join with us. With that, we're out of time. Hope you have a productive week. Thank you and goodbye.